everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us today for our, I think it's the spring town hall. We're still in spring, right? Uh, today's topic, as you all know, is retirement. So we're going to just have a quick welcome from Joanne, and then you're going to meet our benefits team. I guess I could have introduced myself. Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Metters. I'm the Senior Director of Technology and Training here at University Personnel. And uh, that's probably the last you'll hear from me until the end of the webinar. Uh, you can see our discussion topics here on uh, on the screen. Thank you for everybody who uh, sent questions in ahead of time. That really helped us in prepping the agenda today. So we're going to get through as much as we can. I will let you know we are not uh, you are you are not able to chat, but you're able to put your questions in the Q and A. So use the Q and A module at the bottom and put your questions in there. Our benefits reps, as well as the faculty services, will be responding to those questions. And we may answer some of them out loud during the session. And then we are recording, as you can see. So we will be posting this along with the slides and all of the Q&A on our website. And I'll show you where that all will reside uh, at the end of the session today. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to Joanne. Good morning. Happy Friday, like Carrie said. Uh, I'm glad that people uh, have been able to attend. This is going to be a very informative session. Uh, on retirement. I know it can get confusing, the steps to do that, and we have an expert team to assist you with that. I'm not going to say much more because they are the experts. So I'm going to turn it over to Taryn Ashley, who is our uh, director of UP operations, and she oversees the benefits area. And uh, Taryn, take it away. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I am delighted to introduce to you our small but mighty benefits team. Um, who is passionate and dedicated to ensuring that each, every employee receives the best support possible. And I'm hoping that they will give a little wave when I say their name so you can put a face to a name. I would first like to start with our benefit lead, Marie Garcia. Hello. And then we have our four benefit analysts. We have Ruben Soto, Linda May, Hi, Christina Hill, and Michael Pan. Hi, everyone. I would also like to introduce to you our presenters today. Um, mainly, we're going to have Marie Garcia um, speaking first, and then we'll turn it over to Crystal Mercado, the manager of faculty services operations, to talk about some faculty related. Marie, take it away. Thank you, Taryn. Let's go ahead and jump right into it and do an overview of the retirement. So CalPERS, which is our main retirement system here, the Public Employees Retirement System, this is our main 401 defined benefit retirement plan. Um, this provides benefits based on an employee's years of service, their age, and final compensation. The vesting requirements for pension is five full years of service. The vesting for health benefits is either five or 10 years, depending on when you were hired with the state. The minimum age uh, for retirement is age 50 um, if you started with the state prior to January 1st of 2013. If you started after January 1st, on or after January 1st of 2013, um, the minimum age is 52. Um, employees in Unit 8, which is our safety and police officers, um, they do have different requirements, so I would refer them to the collective bargaining agreement as well as CalPERS. Our office could also answer questions as well, um, but it's just a little different with Unit 8. Um, CalPERS offers two types of retirement. So the first one is service retirement. This is considered our normal or regular retirement for employees who have met that um, eligibility requirement. Again, if you're hired January 1st, 2013, you have to be age 50 with five years of service. If you're hired on or after that January 1st, 2013, you must be age 52 or older with five years of service to receive the pension for a lifetime. Again, our safety employees, the minimum age requirement is 50 with five years of service. The second one is our disability retirement. 
So this is for employees who could no longer perform their job duties due to an illness or injury that is expected to be permanent or permanent or last longer than 12 months. Um, there's no age requirement for the disability. Um, however, you must have five years of full-time service. For the industrial disability, there are no requirements for years of service or vesting. Um, your illness or injury for industrial does have to be work-related. Applying for retirement. So before you apply, um, you may wanna attend a CalPERS retirement workshop. Um, so by finding these workshops and seminars, you could definitely go to your My CalPERS account. Um, on that account, you could register for several seminars and classes um, that pertain to retirement. Um, how to obtain estimates and other things about retirement. Um, you could also log into your MyCalPERS account to obtain a pension estimate. Um, it is very important to um, get this estimate so you know how much you would be receiving at the time of retirement. Um, you could run as many estimates as you want in your MyCalPERS. You could choose different retirement dates. You could include beneficiaries or not. Um, you could save them, you could go back and review them, um, compare them. So there's a lot of things you could do in your My CalPERS to um, prepare for your retirement. Um, if you are within one year of retirement, you can request a CalPERS generated estimate by submitting the retirement allowance estimate form, which is on the CalPERS website. Um, this estimate is just a more formal and accurate estimate for your retirement. Um, I would also recommend contacting our office and meeting with your benefit representative um, to go ahead and set that retirement date. Um, and any questions that you may have, we could certainly help you with that. Um, also, we do want to remind you to notify your appropriate administrator of your retirement plans as soon as you can. How and when to apply. So again, logging into your MyCalPERS account to apply for retirement. That is the, fast, the fastest and easiest way to do it. They do have a secure site. Um, we do recommend doing it online. Um, once you do it online, CalPERS will instantly receive it. If there's any errors, issues, they will contact you through your MyCalPERS account or through mail um, if there's any errors. You must apply uh, for retirement at least four months prior to your retirement date. Um, again, we do recommend that in case there are, again, any errors or anything, audits the CalPERS does with your account um, so that th that's all done and you will receive your pension check on time on your retirement date. Your retirement date must uh, be within 120 days of your last day of employment. So. Just as an example, um, your last day on payroll, your separation date when you leave San Jose State has to be within 120 days of your retirement date in order to continue those health benefits into retirement. If your retirement date is beyond the 120 days, you will be ineligible for health benefits into retirement for a lifetime. So that is very important to, to take note of that. Um, your sick leave balance. So if you do have your, any unused sick leave here with San Jose State, um, you do have the option to convert that to service credit. So just as an example, 2,000 hours equals one year of service credit. And again, you must retire within 120 days of your separation date in order for the sick leave to convert and apply to your CalPERS account. Um, just a little note, just Keep in mind that it takes anywhere from 30 to 60 days for CalPERS to apply that unused sick leave to your pension. So if you have any questions, you see it's not being applied, please contact our office and we could follow up with CalPERS as well. The ideal time to retire. So this question does come up a lot. Um, there are three dates that you may want to consider that may impact um, your decision. So one of them is the fiscal year. Another one could be your birthday quarters. And another one could be the cost of living increase. 
just understanding these dates for the fiscal year. Just as an example, if you start working with us in July, it is possible to earn one year of service credit by the end of April, which is only 10 months, as service credit is earned in tenths, not in twelfths. And do keep in mind the fiscal year is defined as July 1st through June 30th. Your birthday quarters is your benefit factor um, that each that increases with each quarter of your age. So it's every three months after your birthday, you will receive um, an additional, your factor will go up by one quarter. And it is all based on your birthday. Your cost of living increase may be something to think about. Um, you do receive your cost of living increase in May, two years from your date, from your date of retirement. So just as an example, if you were to retire on December 31st of this year, you would receive your cost of living increase on May 1st of 2026. If you decide to retire one day after January 1st of 2025, just that one day difference will delay your cost of living increase for one year. So you wouldn't receive it until May 1st of 2027. So that's also another factor you want to look at in what you know, what, what you're deciding and how you want to um, pick your retirement date. Um, Marie, I think, I think Taryn had just um, mentioned there was a couple of questions sure. about um, if you have less than 2,000 hours of sick leave. Could you just kind of address that a little bit? Right. Okay. So any unused sick leave hours that you have will be converted. The 2,000 hours, I just threw out an example there so you could kind of see what it is. But it's hour for hour. So if you if you only have 90 hours of sick leave, that will be converted to service credit and sent on over to CalPERS. Um, vacation, managing your vacation balance. Um, so you will be paid out for any unused vacation time that you have on the books. Do keep in mind this is taxable and it is taxed at the same rate as your regular pay. You will also be paid out for any unused personal holiday that you don't use. Um, if you have any CTO time that you have on the books, that will be paid out upon retirement or separation. If you have a supplemental savings plan, so this includes a 403B with Fidelity, a 457 or 401k with our savings plus program. If you have any one of those plans, you may have you may have the option to roll over your vacation. You could roll over part of it or all of it into those plans where you're not taxed on the amount for the rollover. Um, so if you are interested in something like this, you do want to reach out to your benefit representative at least 30 days before to notify us so we could work with our payroll office to get that all set up for you. There may be other options available to you, so I do advise you to reach out to your benefit representative to go over all the options that you may have in transferring any vacation time or time that you want to roll over. We could go to the next slide. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You can go to the next slide. Saying, there's there's a couple questions in here of just kind of some clarification okay. between retirement date and separation date. Can you kind of talk a little bit about, maybe clarify that a little bit for folks? Yes. So your separation date is your last day here at San Jose State. Your retirement date will be one day after your separation date. And your separation date sometimes is also referred to your last day on payroll. Um, health benefits into retirement. So the eligibility for faculty employees, and this does include instructional and non-instructional faculty employees um, hired prior to July 1st of 2017. Um, your eligibility to continue your medical, dental, and vision, you only need five years of full-time service. If you are a faculty member and you were hired 
on or after July 1st of 2017, and you have no prior state employment, you are a brand new faculty member, your vesting requirement is 10 years um, to continue your health and dental into retirement. Uh, for staff, management employees, confidential employees, um, if you started brand new with the state on or after July 1st of 2018, you will have a 10-year vesting requirement for health, dental, and vision. Um, if you did start prior to July 1st of 2018, you only have a five-year vesting period for um, health, dental, and vision to continue into retirement. Um, in order to qualify for the health, dental, and vision into retirement, again, you must retire within 120 days of your separation date from San Jose State University or the CSU. Uh, medical, dental, and vision. So your medical benefits will automatically transition to CalPERS. There's nothing that you need to do. However, if you are Medicare eligible at the time of separation or retirement, you must apply for Medicare Part B. Um, and this goes for the employee. If the employee has a spouse or a registered domestic partner that is age 65 or older at that time, they must enroll in Part B for the medical benefits to continue or else they will cancel through CalPERS. Uh, your dental and vision uh, benefit is not an automatic benefit. There are forms you do need to complete to ensure that these benefits continue into retirement. So please reach out to the benefits office and schedule an appointment with your representative so we could go ahead and provide you these forms to ensure that dental and vision continue into your retirement. Um, let's see, retirees. So once you retire, um, you will pay the same comp contribution for your health insurance as an actively working employee. Um, do keep in mind, once you are Medicare eligible, we CalPERS will place you in supplement to Medicare. Um, the rates for your health plan will be significantly cheaper once you reach 65. Um, if you do move out of California, do keep in mind that your medical plan may have a higher rate depending on which plan you're enrolled into. Your medical, dental, and vision costs all depends on the plan that you choose and the number of dependents that are covered under each plan. So once you meet with your representative, they can share that with you um, and give you all the details on that information. You could also visit um, the CSU website. We do have the link here. Um, that will also give you more information about medical, dental, and vision into retirement. Uh, calculating your pension, and I know this question comes up a lot about the formulas. So we do have three formulas here at San Jose State. Um, it all depends on when you started with the state. So we have our 2% at 55. Uh, if your start date is prior to January 15, 2011, you are most likely placed in the 2% at 55. 2% at 60. Um, if you started with the state between January 15, 2011 and December 31st, 2012, you were most likely placed in 2% at 60. Um, if your start date was January 1st, 2013 or after, um, you were probably placed in 2% at 60. So the way the formula works is 2% of your salary for each year of service starting at your normal retirement age. Um, the normal retirement age is part of the formula, as you can see there. It would be either 55, 60, or 62. And just to kind of go over a little bit about the formulas, um, your retirement benefit is calculated based on using a formula. It's not how much you have in the account, and it's not your contribution that you set aside. So there are three factors that are looked at when your retirement is calculated. They look at your service credit, which is the years of service, times your benefit factor, which is the percentage 
per year that you receive, and then your final monthly compensation. So keep in mind that this final compensation is your highest average annual compensation during any consecutive 12 or 36 months. Um, and that's a period of your employment. So the 12 or 36 months depends on when you started with the state. So you'll need to check with your benefit representative to see once they calculate your retirement, if they will be using a 12 month period or a 36 month period. So that's a little bit how your formula works and how it's calculated. Um, but again, if you have any questions, please reach out to our office. Um, there's also publications as well as um, seminars and classes through CalPERS that go over how the formulas work and how they're calculated. For our safety personnel, which is unit eight, again, the details could be found on the CalPERS website. Um, just logging into your MyCalPERS to get an estimate. Um, that's, I would say, the number one thing that you'll want to do to, to first start this process. Um, another thing you want to look at is thinking about your deductions that may come out of your pension check. So you're going to have your medical, dental, and vision if you elect those benefits to continue. Um, again, depending on the plan that you're enrolled into, you may have a deduction, you may not. Um, also, if you enroll into any voluntary benefits, um, that will come out of your pension check. And then depending on where you live, you know, you may have federal state taxes. Um, we do have a link here that kind of shows you some more information for retirees and what could come out of your check. Uh, working after retirement. So if you were to retire from San Jose State or any CSU, there are some employees that want to come back to work with San Jose State. So if you do return, um, there are basically two options. So you could reinstate from retirement, which means you basically stop your retirement. You will no longer be receiving that. Or you could return as a rehired annuitant where you continue to receive your retirement through CalPERS, but there are some restrictions on that. So if you do return to work with San Jose State, um, you must wait at least 180 days in order to come back to work with any CalPERS or CSU agency. And you could only work up to 960 hours in a fiscal year as a rehired annuitant. If you do go work for a non-CalPERS agency, um, there are no reinstatement restrictions and there is no impact on your pension. You could work as many hours as you want. Um, CalPERS has no restrictions on that. I think uh, you're getting ready to turn this over to Crystal for faculty. Um, okay. there. Is that what's happening next? I think that's what the next slide is. But I just wanted to, I mean, listening to this, it's just, I'm reminded about how intricate this process is and how much it's, you know, it's really important for people considering retirement to touch base with your benefit rep and get all the information you need. And I see that again in the, in the Q&A, there's lots of questions about the separation date versus the retirement date, and your calculations. Um, so definitely work with your benefit reps to make sure that you are getting the benefits that you're entitled to and doing taking all the steps you need to be well-prepared to enter into your retirement, which you have worked hard for. So just wanted to comment on that. I'm just impressed by you know, the number of details and uh, it's a lot. So it's a lot to try to process. And we do have our experts here to assist you uh, on a one-to-one -one level, personal level. So feel free to reach out to them with any of your questions. Um, you know, following this, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can, but some things are very personal to you to just make sure that you're reaching out, making sure that you get the answers that you need. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Joanne. So now we'll turn it over to Crystal Mercado, which is our manager of faculty services and operations. Thank you very much, Marie, for all of the information. And for everyone here, I would like to talk about two faculty programs that are related to retirement. 
Um, so specifically, we'll go over this one first, Faculty Early Retirement Program, or FERP, which basically happens after you technically retire. And for faculty, it gives them the ability to retire, receive retirement and employment payments and benefits while still holding the same tenure rank, tenure line rank, salary, and responsibilities. So there are a lot of advantages to this program. Basically, faculty work a reduced workload, which is a 50% time base. Salary for the program is prorated based on your prior salary uh, before you retired, and you get the retirement pay and benefits. Faculty get dental and vision coverage as long as they work 50 at a 50% time base. And no retirement deductions and sick leave is converted to service credit upon retirement. Big important thing to note here is that faculty still retain their tenure status and their rank. Next slide, please. For eligibility for this program, faculty members must be tenured faculty at normal retirement age. So we have here the various formulas in regards to the retirement age. And the program itself is a is a five consecutive year program, either academic or fiscal year, depending on your appointment. And more information will be given to you based on your appointment. Next slide. Regarding the work assignments and workload, it'll consist of the following. There is a maximum time base of one half or 50% time base of your year prior to your retirement, and specifically breaking it down a little bit more, instructional faculty will have to work in the academic year. So it could be one semester at a full, at a full time base or over the academic year at 50% time base. Counselors and or librarians can work in the fiscal year for up to 960 hours. And for faculty still have their normal duties, um, consisting of the 20% of service and also committee service as well. Next slide, please. In addition, faculty may work special session appointments if, if everything is approved, um, but more into additional employment here. For these types of appointments, generally SJSU additional work is not approved, but Tower and Research Foundation work is generally allowed. That is just the general information with regards to the FERP program. We would also like to give you a little bit of information if you're interested in the FERP, in enrolling in the FERP program. Here's a little bit about the process itself. So eligible faculty, they'll generally get notification from faculty services containing more information and instructions. But overall, the faculty member must notify faculty services of their interests, generally about six months prior to the start of the upcoming academic year of their first FERP appointment. And generally that would be around on or before the month of February. FERP appointments start with the beginning of the academic year right after retirement. And for counselors and librarians specifically, that would be the fiscal year, the start of the fiscal year after retirement. You may not have any gaps or you may not skip a year before starting. Faculty members should work with their department to determine their workload, which consists of their time base or FTE and also the semesters in which they will teach. Faculty will be directed to retire with CalPERS as well. And once we verify all of these steps are completed, faculty services will send the faculty member an appointment letter with all of the details of their appointment. So during the FERP program, I will say faculty can request to change their appointment. There are things such as um, if you're working one semester, possibly changing the semester, if approved as well, time bases can be reduced. However, just know that then the time base becomes permanent. You cannot go up in time base. FERP faculty can go on leave. However, their FERP appointment timeframe of five consecutive years will not be extended. That still stays the same. 
um, and it will end five years after the FERP appointment started. Faculty can separate before completing the five-year appointment as well. And after the fifth consecutive year, the FERP program will end. Faculty can continue teaching if they wish as a re rehired and retired annuitant lecturer. And the big thing with this is that you would then lose your, or you may lose your um, status as a tenure line faculty and you will do the duties of the lecturer rank. And after FERP, there is no 180 day wait time to work as a retired annuitant as well. So that was our FERP program. The second program that I would like to talk about that relates to faculty is the Pre-Retirement Time-Based Reduction Program, or we like to call it PRTD. So there's many advantages to this program. And overall, this allows eligible tenured faculty to work less than full-time while still earning full service credit toward retirement for up to five consecutive years and also still holding the same tenure line rank, salary, and responsibilities. So here, faculty have a reduced workload, but the big thing is that they contribute still full-time towards retirement. And despite the reduced workload, faculty still maintain their benefits like their health and their dental. And it's just important to note here that faculty will still retain their tenure status and rank in this program. To be eligible for this program, there are a lot of details listed here, but faculty members must be tenured faculty, ages 55 to 64 when you enter the program. Um, in addition to CSU full-time for at least 10 years and continuously full-time for five years prior to entering the program. And overall, the program itself consists of five consecutive years, either academic or fiscal year, depending on your appointment. And once we are able to look at your appointment, we will give you that information at as it relates to you. The workload and assignment will consist of the following. Instructional faculty work in the, in the academic year, of course, as well as counselors and librarians, they work in the fiscal year. Time base. Um, in terms of the time base, you do have a couple of options to choose from. And specifically, you can choose from these options here, which is one third or five WTUs, one half or 7.5 WTUs, or two thirds or 10 WTUs of the regular time base. And in regards to the work assignment as well, you'll still continue your normal responsibilities and duties. Um, generally that consists of 20% service in addition to committee service as well. And work in additional employment is allowed for up to 25% additional work. And again, for those who may be interested in regards to this program and enrolling, here's a quick breakdown of the process. Faculty members must notify faculty services of their interest in this program six months prior to entering PRTB. PRTB appointments will start as early as the next academic year or the next fiscal year. Faculty members should work with their department to determine their workload and what their FTE will be during that time. And once all of the required steps are verified, faculty services will send the faculty member an appointment letter that details all of the appointment information. During the program, faculty can request to change their appointment. For example, um, your time base can be reduced even further, and if approved, those time bases become permanent. And after the fifth consecutive year and after the program ends, a couple of options for faculty. Faculty can continue teaching as a part-time tenured faculty member at that reduced time base, or faculty can retire and participate in the FERP program, 
making sure that you follow all the information that we listed previously with regards to the FERP program. Faculty can retire and continue teaching as a retired annuitant. You must wait though the 180 days before uh, teaching in the retired annuitant uh, position. Or lastly, the last option is that faculty can retire and just stop teaching in general. So the PRTB process really does allow you to still work um, in this pre-retirement in this pre-retirement program and can set you up for retirement. And that concludes the faculty programs related to retirement. At this point, I would like to have Carrie continue on with the next step. Thank you, Crystal. So a couple of things that I wanted to go over just to make sure that y'all know how to find your benefits rep, how to find faculty services on our website. So on the university personnel website, and I'm just gonna jump over there real quickly. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. Hopefully y'all all have it bookmarked, sjsu.edu slash up. From the main page of our website, if you scroll down, you can find a link to your UP representatives. There are screenshots of this in the slides, so when we get them posted, you can see it. When you're on this page, and this is how you can find not only your benefits reps, but your payroll reps, your recruiter, and so forth. You can simply put your department name in or your department ID if you know it. So let's say it's biology. You can just type a few letters and you'll find it. Click search. And then when you scroll down, you'll see your ESS rep, your payroll rep, and your benefits rep, recruiting, compensation, and so forth. But that benefits rep is going to be right there in the middle. So it's pretty easy to find them. And then you can contact them either via phone or their email here. Again, I think that's probably going to be the best way to really get a lot of these very detailed benefits, uh, retirement questions answered. I, I know because I talked to Marie because I'm retiring and I, I won't say it, Joanne, I won't say it out loud, but it's shortly. Um, and it's, it's very important. I learned a lot of things that I did not know, even though I've worked here for over 25 years. So it's very, very important to have those conversations. I highly encourage it. But again, you can find that on our website. And I've got it linked here in the slides and we'll get those posted. Hopefully early next week, we'll get those posted. And uh, as long as well as the video from today, but then you can easily find your benefits rep, okay? As far as finding faculty services, again, from our website, it's a little bit different. You can find them under the Our Teams link. So under Our Teams, you can scroll down to faculty services. And then you'll find all of the contact information you heard from Crystal today. Of course, James, he's been monitoring the chat. But Remy Bontrager is actually going to be your point person for faculty. So you can find all the contact information here. As you see, um, our faculty services reps and managers all have open lab hours. So you'll be able to contact them at, um, at any of these times or email or phone call uh, to get in touch with them any other way. Okay. I'll put this link in the chat as well. And then again, it's also linked here on our on the slides. Okay. So what's going to happen next is we will post the slides on our website as well as all of the Q&A, um, everything that came in today. Uh, thank you, anonymous attendee, for your congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, all the Q&A from today, as well as all the questions that came in ahead of time. Some of those questions were very specific, so we didn't answer all of them, but we tried to get to as many as we could today. We'll get all of that posted as well as this recording. Like I said, it should all be there uh, by, by the end of next week, hopefully earlier. We will send out a message to, um, to the whole campus once everything is posted, okay? But in case you don't see that message or you wanna just check to see if I've done it, um, we have a separate page on our website for UP Town Halls. So under our professional development area, you can find our UP Town Halls page. And then here you'll be able to find uh, the links. You can see all of our previous town halls. We'll have a new one here for May of 2024. It'll be right on top. And inside there, you'll be able to see the, the Zoom recording, the slides, and the Q&A. Okay. So you can always find that. I'll put that link in the chat as well. 
And then we'll also be sending out, those of you that are here today, we'll send you an evaluation out so that you can let us know what you thought of the session, give us ideas for further sessions. And there'll be another town hall probably later in the summer. I will not be here. Sorry, sorry, Joanne, sorry. Not, not really sorry, <laughs> but, um, but Melanie will graciously take it over from me when I leave. So it'll be all good. So be on the lookout for that. We don't have a topic for it yet. So if you've got any ideas uh, on topics, uh, please let us know either in that evaluation or you can send us an email as well. All right, I think that's everything we had for today. We're so appreciative of you attending. Um, I think there are still a few questions out here uh, on the Q&A, so we'll get those answered. Um, anybody else want to say anything else before we wrap things up? That went much faster than it usually does. Well, I just wanted to reiterate, I mean, uh... All of the details uh, and all the nuances of everybody's particular situation. I mean, there's a lot of uh, information here. It's kind of general, trying to generalize it, but everybody has a, that their unique, you know, questions and, and, and issues they might want to go over with the benefits rep. So definitely speak to someone. Uh, and you saw there's, you know, the, the faculty programs that are there. So there's, you know, people who can help you with that to, to navigate all of that. Um, Again, there's lots of questions in the Q&A, so we will be posting those. Uh, I don't know why Carrie's retiring. I can't, I mean, I tried to talk her out of it, but no, I'm just kidding. That was very selfish of me, but no, we will miss her very much. But congratulations to Carrie and to anyone else who's listening who's uh, on the cusp of retiring. Again, you know, um, you've earned it. You've worked really hard for it. Uh, make sure you get all the benefits that you are entitled to uh, by speaking to our expert teams both in uh, the benefits office and the faculty services. And so um, congratulations to anyone who is on the call that, that is retiring. Um, but um, thank you for attending. Um, and we will see you at the next town hall without Carrie, unfortunately. But Melanie will try to step in her shoes to monitor everything and moderate. Anybody else have anything to say or any follow-up closing remarks? Good to go. All right. Well, thank you very much for attending. We appreciate it. We hope this session has been informative and again, just encouraging, uh, you know, those reach outs to our benefits reps. That's why they're here. They're very uh, eager to assist you and help you and, and, and make sure that your retirement is everything that you wanted. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>